the prime ideas, I, I, I'm, a, uh, if you don't know me, William Parham, musician, Henry Grimes, musician, Connie Crothers, musician, if you just came in. And one of the prime ideas um, that, I, that sort of ran with me was the idea of the phrase from the uh, poet Kenneth Patchen. It says, through acceptance of the mystery, peace. And only through peace can we accept the mystery. And that's kind of what this music is talking about. It's about not knowing where the mystery came from or dissecting it, but accepting it. And uh, you know, John Coltrane said in, his, in his, his later years, they said, well, what do you want to say about the music? In the liner notes, Mr. Nat Hentoff and, and, and Coltrane said something like, the music speaks for itself. There's nothing I can say about the music. There's nothing I can say um, about what we've, did. It, we've done. It kind of rings and, and sounds out and resounds by itself. So that's what this music is. I mean, we, I could uh, talk about the idea of sound and technique and note um, from a uh, concept which you, you get from uh, filmmaker Stan Brackage is the idea that what you're focused on is very narrow. Your peripheral vision is much wider than what you're focused on. And uh, as you play music, he didn't say this, but now I'm stepping in. Uh, as you play music, the more you widen your, your, your sense of sound, you begin to step into the peripheral. And the peripheral becomes the major focus. And then the, uh, what you would call musical elements become the, the, the minor focus, okay? And that uh, you have sound, and then you, in the middle, you have love on the left in the periphery, and you have love on the right in the periphery, you see? And that is really the element that ignites. That's the catalyst for all art is love, uh, is shadowed with a word we've used around um, our world of art for art, uh, compassion. We're not the only ones, of course, who use this word. It's been around for a long time. But that is the catalyst for the, the art. That is that the extension of the idea of, okay, uh, all right, well, where's the melody? Where's the rhythm? Where's the harmony? Where the, uh, all the musical elements? But uh, as I was talking to uh, someone today who was doing, doing an interview around the corner, spoke about that there are many systems of music, okay? And why we cho choose to use a Western system of music, I don't have no, I have no idea. Except maybe Western people have set their roots all around the world and left their systems of music. But you have, and, and this is, um, to paraphrase Ornette Coleman, um, when he said there are many systems of harmonics as there are stars in the sky. There are many systems of music as there are people who play music. So, um, so that's what happened here today. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, uh, musically, you, you're talking just about something beautiful, something arresting, something full of truth, and something full of uh, illogic. Mm -hmm. Okay, because um, you're thinking of the highest form of magic being the highest form of what is illogical. The lowest form of magic is logic. Okay, now, um, 
So that's what these musicians were dealing with today. And that's what they deal with every single day. It's their lives. It's something that they just have to do that comes out of them. And it, and it reaches those who it's intended for. It, it, it throws out, it deals with total freedom, total truth, and total commitment. Um, so, I'm not sure the subject matter for this talk or these questions, but we'll just proceed a lot like this, using that as an introduction. And um, Henry Grimes, um, musically, has always had this ability, okay, to when wh whether he was playing with Sonny Rollins or Coleman Hawkins or Stan Getz, or Jerry Mulligan, or Albert Eiler, or Cecil Taylor, or um, Frank Wright, the Rev, or Charles Tyler. He had the ability to find the field of the peripheral and add it to the music. Mm -hmm. He had the ability to find what you call, uh, in the line of notes, of um, Henry's first record, which I was honored enough to be able to write, uh, I described Henry as a Nelly. Now, in the shamanistic world, a Nelly is a person who has a lot of knowledge, who has a lot of ability, but you don't know where it came from. And you can't trace it back to any educational source. You can't trace it back to any parental source. You cannot trace it back. You just know that it's a formula. Henry picks up the bass, picks the bass up, equals magic. <laughs> Why? I don't know. That's just the way it is. Okay? Connie when she sits at the throne, of, which is a piano bench, she is a queen. Yes. And um, when her hands touch the keys, magic happens. Listen to the different touches that each finger has a different touch. Mm -hmm. you, you, you touch, you press, you release. You touch, you press, you release. Then you touch another way and you get a different sound. Ever so subtle. All right, you have colors. You add a little bit of yellow. Then she's adding a little more red in there. Then she's adding some blue in there. Then she's adding some, then she says, oh wait, I have purple. You know, then she's adding some more of a of, of chartreuse or some other color she has in her palette that she's developed all her life since she was a kid. Now. She's also a Nelly. Okay, now you can say, well, with Connie though, we can say, well, you went to this school and you did this and you studied with, no, had nothing to do with it. They didn't teach Connie anything. <laughs> I can attest to that because that was the word. She was there and she learned a lot. She learned a lot. Henry learned a lot, but the magic formula, the drop it of magic that you put in there that makes the bird fly that was dead, you thought was dead, they were born with. And it came out. Mm -hmm. So now, um, uh, we're going to let Connie say uh, a few comments on what was said and about uh, whatever she wants to talk about. And um, so, Connie Crothers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. can't express how honored I feel to be here with you tonight. I mean this. So, words, truth, beauty, love, they merge. And when they do, 
we are free. That's freedom. When we create music, it's always from love. We don't need to think about truth. We don't need to search for beauty. It's all in that love. Early on, I met what William is describing. Just when I was starting out as an improviser, it hit me like a tremendous opening in the cosmos within myself. Mystery. And I knew it so deeply because I had to accept, I had to accept that I could not control my music. I could not even guide my music. I couldn't think my way through any musical moment. Hope that it comes out right. Dread that it won't. I had to let all that go because I knew through and through that it's all mystery, that I can know nothing about the next instant. I can't know anything about the previous one. And I can't even really know in the sense that we humans define knowing about something. The present instant. It's, it's a continuity of feeling. That's the only way we know. And when we go there and accept this amazing mystery, we are free because we are in love. Okay? Yeah. 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 I just want to add one thing, actually in connection with what William just said. On Facebook, uh, by the picture of Henry and me, Henry had written, we are the song. We, all of us, we are the song. We know we live in a terribly repressive, oppressive society. As much as we know, we don't know. It's so much worse than any of us sitting here can know. And here we are in the midst of such evil in this beauty. Mm. I feel that this music has within it the answer because this music has nothing to do with the premises that cause the society to work against humanity so badly. If we identify with these premises, we free ourselves within ourselves from this oppression. If enough people feel this, understand this, and can live this any way they can, the oppression would not stand a chance. So this music is the revolutionary force Transform it, transformation in the real sense, not somebody's idea, not some uh, heralded leader. It's all of us, everyone in humanity, opening up to the premises that this music came from and expresses with every instant when it happens. And that is being open to feeling rather than oppressive thought. Being open to joy and being open to the expression of love that we're talking about tonight, having that being a guiding premise in your life. This uh, terrible society, it would not stand a chance against that. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, when we step out of ourselves into what one would say, tone world. Um, there's no political oppression in the tone world. There's no rent. 
There's no con ed. Everything is free. It's like heaven. Yes. That's what it is. So uh, instead of trying to change this society, we change society by having more people listen to music mm -hmm. and listen to poetry and listen to and watch dance to view and jump inside paintings and climb on top of sculptures mm -hmm. and uh, rescue children and teach them. If we all are doing our fruitful work, then the world around us changes, okay? Uh, and then people will, will, will pick up on it. I mean, that's why this music is allowed to exist. And that's why we're still playing, because there's no, there's no economic reason for it to exist. There's no economic <laughs> sense. There's no economic reason for, for, for any of this. So obviously the reason for what we do is to reach people and to uh, heal, uplift them, and inspire them to see way beyond their conscious way of thinking. And it's very successful so far. You know, it's very successful, uh, and we just have to revamp our way of thinking. You know, like, like, well, uh, we want to do this. We want to be a success, and and Wakanda Ken McIntyre said this: mm. If you're a success in this world, you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was Daryl, right? Yeah. How are you, Daryl? Yeah. Okay, good. How, how, how's that? How's the horns? Good. Good, good. Daryl is a wonderful a saxophone sure player. Yeah. I've not seen him in a while. Okay, uh, any questions in the back there? Some shy people back there, come on. You want to, like, you want to know where Henry got his hat from? Come on, it doesn't have to be a profound question, it can be a simple question. <laughs> I kind of want you to ask a question, yeah. but I'm going to kind of spoil the vibe if I ask it. No, 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 go ahead, that's okay. I know there's, I know there's no easy answer to this, but uh, can you guys, like, for me personally, can you elaborate on the love factor? Yes. When we're born, we come out of love, and we love instantly. Some of it is primal. We must. But really and truly, true freedom is the realization of the reality of the moment and how we must live it. So a baby bonds. And there's no um, qualifications in this one. And as we come up, go to school, get met with the requirements, uh, get hit with proscriptions, we lose our contact with something primal. And that's that love that we're born with, born, born right into. So that's what I'm talking about. It's not like a pretty emotion. It's not like an ideal. It's more like being uh, desirous of finding this primal uh, place within ourselves. That place has no boundaries on it. So if you can, if you can find that, you don't even need a definition of love. Mm -hmm. It's like you're alive. You're it's it's being. You you just simply be. So would you say it's like um, the higher power? Well, I see. I think it's. I don't see it that way. I think it's a a, a, a kind of a flowing energy rather than a higher power. It's in everything that doesn't get constricted. It has to be uh, forced out of uh, a, nat a a naturally born being. And this happens in our society. It's normal. So it's easy to not <coughs> know what on earth, you know, what is love. Everybody goes through life, in fact, struggling with this in some situation or another, trying to find what love means, what it is, how it feels, how it happens. But in fact, the way I feel it is, it's not complicated. It's simple. You just need to clear everything out of there. And then when you can do that, it's just there. It's like a con continuity. Uh, it's, it's a feeling that uh, uh, is with you, a presence that's in you. And no matter what situation you face, 
you can feel that contact. But that's what it takes. You have to be willing to take on all the stuff, you know, that we all get hit with. And do your best to just clear it all out and strive for uh, the simple perception of this ultimately primal being. Mm. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, oh, yes. So, Connie, you, you started out as with classical music. And at some point, um, you left that modality and moved into another space in your music. Mm -hmm. uh, could you talk about that? development or evolution? Sure. I'm no longer calling it classical music. I call it European music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, like kids in this country, you know, we get European music. Now, I'm not saying that I didn't value some of the music. I loved it very much. But as soon as I started to play the piano, just to tell you, I didn't want to do that with my life. I knew I wanted to do my own music. Mm. As beautiful as the pieces were, um, and I loved them, as little as I felt I could do when I was a child, I did it. So I was a composer right from the beginning. And um, then I was a performer, you know, performing a lot. When you perform European music, there can be quite a lot of anxiety that goes with, with, along with it. Like, for example, you can't improvise those notes. You've got to play the ones that are written. And everybody knows that if you're performing at a concert. People know when you don't hit the right notes. But I was pretty good at doing that, but I still had a tremendous performance anxiety. Anyway, so um, I was a composer when I went to UC Berkeley and they were in their heads. It was all about compositional rigor. I thought to myself, okay, rigor mortis. <laughs> <laughs> there was just no life there. Nobody talked about feeling or beauty. The words didn't exist. They were into procedure. I knew that it was not for me, and I thought, well, you know, there's a great art music that is going on right now, and I'm going to find out about it, and that was jazz, right? I knew nothing. So I started listening to radio, buying records. I didn't find it. And then my big turning point was hearing Lenny Tristano. And I heard in his music uh, something that opened it up for me. Mm. I knew that was my doorway. Mm. So I did quite a lot to get here to New York City from California. But it, here I was. And then I started out from zero because though I might have improvised when I was a little girl, I had lost that and European trained imp instrumentalists do. I had to, I had to open that back up again. That wasn't so easy. And in fact, just to say that when I was just a little past that uh, uh, beginning steps, that's when I gained my insight about mystery. That was huge, because I realized that uh, I could know everything I, uh, anybody would ever know about a score, but about improvising music, you know nothing, nothing. And you have to rely on the music itself. You trust. Mm -hmm. You go into the music and you know the music will give it all to you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that answers the question, but it was tremendous because uh, when I did my first concert, a big deal, <laughs> this is my first performance. Lenny Tristano himself presenting me at Carnegie Recital Hall. Wow, I didn't get to come up in bars or clubs or little gigs here and there. Um, so I walked out on the stage and there was no performance anxiety, none. It was joy. I loved being there. I was home. This is my home. <laughs> 
Well, I just want to say thank you so much to the artists who play tonight and to the people who present this. Because I, I was just feeling that, you know, not only for the love, but for the guts that artists really have, for the bravery that artists have. When you think about what we're up against in this world, and I don't want to get too into it, but if you're talking about trillions of dollars going into craziness, and just a few dollars of people's hearts and souls and lives going into beauty. I mean, they want to make machines to take us to this world or that dimension. We already have everything we need. We have, we have people like you, and, and we have these, these beautiful musical instruments. And I just want to say how much it means to all of us, especially me, all this beautiful music, and, and how much it's easy as an artist to feel alone, because maybe we don't get a lot of you know, recognition and certainly uh, much pay. But um, you never know who it inspires and who it influences and whose life it really makes worth living. Uh, one of the, most people know I studied with Connie a long time and, and I had most of my questions answered <laughs> from that. But uh, I also studied for a short time with a saxophone teacher, Joe Albert, who once said to me, and I was complaining, you know, family doesn't dig it, my friends don't know what's going on. He said, Richard, the squares will never understand the rounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, people who can, who can hear it, that's beautiful. People who can't, it doesn't matter. Maybe it'll change. But more than anything else, I just want to thank you for your, your bravery and your beauty and your love and, and your life and know how much it changes our world for us more than mm. anything else. Mm. Yeah. Well, they are very, 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 I mean, Henry was 80 years old this year, mm -hmm. and he's still going, mm -hmm. and, um, you, you know, it's, it's not an easy life. Uh, it's not, you know, there, we, we play through aches and pains and mm -hmm. emotional upheaval up and down. And, uh, but then again, you know, nobody promised you a rose, us a rose garden, right. but you have to remember this. You, you are a rose. <laughs> okay? So just keep that in mind. And, um, okay, so any more questions? If not, I think we're going to wrap it up. No, that's fine. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, hey. Yeah, go ahead. I was just wondering if you could talk more about the idea of the periphery and the mind state related to relating musically, not from a central position, but from a peripheral position. Well, quickly. Um, <laughs> quickly. Yeah, quickly. We're running out of time. Um, it's just training yourself to to use and listen to don't think of music as notes, okay? Don't think of music as staff, but think of music as sound, but then also think of music as anything that is beautiful. Mm. Think of music as uh, the idea of, of uh, a bird is music, a flying bird, is a poem in the sky, mm. okay? And um, flowers and music, your music, we're all music. And so you just have to expand your idea of what music is. It's not about scales, it's not about, the, the, you know, it says, well, what can I play if I don't play scales? Well, you play sound. And there's so many sounds you can play, and you can create your own scales. Yeah. And once you start doing this, your vision begins to open up. And, and, and then you can begin to see a, a, a panoramic view of art and music, rather than just saying, well, uh, we have to, you know, major, minor, Lydian, no, no, no. There's so <coughs> many modes that you haven't, we, haven't been, we haven't even discovered. We haven't even been taught, because mm -hmm. they don't want to teach them to you. Mm -hmm. 
because they don't, if you're right, they don't know him, first of all. <laughs> so not too many people know him, but if, you know, if you ever went to a Sun Ra rehearsal, you know, you would know, uh, you know, I mean, it's like incredible, you know. So anyway, yeah, you just have to expand and open up your heart and, um, and just, uh, you know, yeah, you just continue to, to, to love, accept, listen to music. And you and you'll open up and you you'll see and study with good people. Study with a visionary, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll help open you up to where you want to see things. Because that's what a visionary does; it opens up your vision, so you can have your own vision. Because you have to have your own vision. You can't live off of someone else's vision. We all have our own vision. Okay, we got to find out what that is before we get out of here. Mm. Very important. Mm. So if you haven't found it, get with it. Get, get, come on, get, get get clicking with it because if not, you could run into some trouble mm. on the other side. Mm. Okay, you might get sent back. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs>